Catherine Zimmerman is a resident fellow at the American Enterprise Institute think tank. Thank you for speaking with us here on France 24. It's good to be joining you today. What, what more do, can, can we um, surmise uh, regarding the identity of this mastermind of the killing? There isn't much coming out about his identity. Little is known. Uh, what has surfaced is that the U.S. assessment is that the Taliban did not know that they actually killed this individual. They had been doing raids uh, in, in the south uh, uh, of Afghanistan. It had been uh, predicted uh, when the Taliban took Kabul that they would ha be constantly having this formidable fight with more radical groups like ISIS-K in this instance. How has it panned out? It certainly panned out to be true, where the Taliban is facing a significant resistance from the Islamic State Khorasan group. And, you know, even though we've seen a slight decline in attacks from the Islamic State inside of Afghanistan, what we're seeing is growing aspirations globally, as well as shifting target sectors sets within, within the country, targeting foreign uh, consulates and embassies that are still operating in Kabul, and really threatening the region itself with terrorism that could destabilize a very sensitive area. And uh, the, uh, uh, the fact that it's the White House uh, announcing this confirmation, what does that tell you? It actually hasn't been the White House announcing it. The White House was reaching out to the various Gold Star families of the service members who were killed in August of 2021. And it looks like the initial reports came from those families who shared the information with each other via WhatsApp. Um, the White House has, I don't think, officially confirmed it, but we have had U.S. officials speaking on background confirming the information. But U.S. officials are definite, are, are sure. So does that means they've got their confirmation somehow. Yes, they certainly do. And I think the caginess around uh, the individual and how they found it out is to protect the sources and methods that they're using to get that intelligence to ensure that the Taliban and, of course, other bad actors in Afghanistan don't know how the United States knows what we do. Last uh, month, a few weeks back, uh, there was uh, this 21-year-old... Uh, uh, reservist in the Massachusetts uh, Air National Guard. It turns out he'd been leaking uh, classified documents, including uh, about how uh, radical groups could be harbored in Afghanistan. Uh, is there the feeling that uh, the U.S. is working uh, all by itself, or are they sharing intelligence with the Taliban? I don't believe they're sharing intelligence with the Taliban at this point. I, I believe it's actually against U.S. law. Um, but, you know, as we're looking at the posture, I think it should be a given that the United States is looking for partners in the region and on the ground in order to ensure that our interests are secured. Because when you think back to those days, uh, 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 those chaotic days of uh, August uh, 2021, uh, you had... Uh, the U.S. Uh, soldiers, the Marines and, and, and the other f f forces there, uh, who were forced to coordinate at the time uh, with the new masters of Kabul. Yes, they were. And I think that was an exigent circumstance. Um, it seems as though the, the U.S. Uh, communication with the Taliban remains through Tom West, who's our special envoy, and it remains at the, the the diplomatic level within the, the Taliban center in Kabul, rather than the Taliban power center, which is in Kandahar in the south. Catherine Zimmerman, uh, at, at this point in time, uh, it's uh, not been a normalization of ties overall with the, between the West uh, and the Taliban. The Taliban have gone back on uh, pledges to let uh, uh, girls go to school. Uh, what's the thinking in Washington? Uh, do you uh, cut off aid to, the, uh, to, to Afghanistan or do you help? The humanitarian situation in Afghanistan is going to remain the key concern where Washington, for better or for worse, is somewhat responsible for the conditions today in Afghanistan. And I think that the White House is trying to thread this needle very carefully by ensuring that Afghan civilians aren't punished uh, for the Taliban de facto government.
Because if they uh, cut every cut off all international aid, or if they pressure to do so, what that just a it's obviously it, it punishes civilians and fosters uh, more radical groups. It certainly will foster resentment and it drives support to the Taliban in a way. Um, and it's it's incredibly challenging for international actors to work around the Taliban itself, uh, given how the power system is working inside of Afghanistan. Um, I think as we're looking at whether the United States is going to continue to operate inside the country, it's going to come down to the security of the various uh, uh, humanitarian and development agencies that are working on the ground, uh, whether the Taliban is permitting them to operate freely, uh, and how the assistance is actually being used, whether it's going for humanitarian purposes based on need, um, or as we've seen many times before, where the Taliban or other groups that have seized power take control of the assistance and use it to further cement their own hold over the country. Catherine Zimmerman, many thanks for speaking with us from Washington. Thank you.